Long before high-rise towers engulfed downtown Honolulu, King Kamehameha III in 1827 donated land at the top of Fort Street so the Sacred Heart Fathers could establish a mission. Twelve years later, in 1839, the king helped lay the cornerstone of Hawaii's first Catholic church, which the fathers would call the Cathedral of Our Lady of Peace. As the mother church of what is now the Catholic Diocese of Honolulu, the cathedral predates its neighbors, St. Andrew's Cathedral, Washington Place, Iolani Palace, and is only eight months younger than another historic landmark, the Protestant Kauai Hau Church. I mean, just to give sort of a world context, it, it's been through the Civil War, the American Civil War, the annexation, overthrow of the kingdom, both world wars, Korean and Vietnam conflicts, and, and I attended a, a funeral here of a soldier who died in Iraq. So the whole scope of world history, um, this church has been around. It's, it's been standing the whole time. Our Lady of Peace Cathedral has survived the two Chinatown fires of 1890 and 1900 and is on the National Register of Historic Places. It is a gem worthy of preserving. Our Lady of Peace Cathedral is the oldest Catholic cathedral in the United States in continuous use as a cathedral. The quietness of the place, the, the glow of the, the stained glass windows, the statues, it, it all spoke to a very sacred place, you know, sort of an oasis that you can step into and, and it was very quiet, prayerful. Within its walls are also significant pieces of artistic treasures like the church's historic pipe organ. Just, just exactly what is here, no idea. It's just that welcomeness, we're all the same, even though we're different. There's no judgment here, you know, it's love, it's aloha. The world needs faith. The world needs something to hold on to. And because I found it here, and I know that it's here, and I have seen in my 20 years working here, I've seen it happen time and time again, where people come with a need, or people that don't have a need. They just want the opportunity to be close to God. Today, in the midst of the worldly Mecca of Honolulu, Our Lady of Peace Cathedral has provided a sanctuary for whomever walks through her doors. As soon as I'm walking the doors and I sit in the pew, you know, I, of course, say prayers, you know, and um, I look around the church. I, I know that the, the, the saints, Damien and Marianne, are present here. I feel their presence, you know, and um, that helps me to pray. And then, then I look around the church and I see the statues, which help me to remind me of the, and there's many statues in here, of different strong, spiritual people who are examples for us to follow so that we can live a life that they live. And um, yeah, so it's loaded. This, this place is full of uh, spiritual food. Aloha, I'm Emmy Tamimbang. You know, I've spent many of my formative years here going to catechism classes for my first Holy Communion, my confirmation, and of course, to attend Sunday Masses. As a little girl, I even saw my husband's father, the late Governor John A. Burns, walk to this church from Washington Place to attend Mass daily. 
Today, Our Lady of Peace Cathedral celebrates many significant events. Each year, the Red Mass is held here. State lawmakers of all faiths attend a liturgy, asking for divine guidance at the start of each legislature. Recently, Bishop Larry Silva was inducted into the prestigious Royal Order of Kamehameha. A colorful and regal ceremony was conducted in the church. But as strong and stately as the building has remained, holding many island historic gatherings here, Our Lady of Peace is quietly crumbling from water and termite damage. The second floor of the church is now closed. Our cathedral is basically made of coral that was harvested right down from um, Honolulu Harbor. They cut them out in big chunks, squares like this, and just dragged them up here and after 170 years, it is still there. That is part of the problem because coral is calcium and calcium absorbs water. So we've got a lot of water damage, we've got a lot of termite damage in there that needs to be addressed if we expect to be here. The cathedral's clock is more than 200 years old. Every other week, someone climbs to the attic to pull this cord to keep the oldest public clock in Hawaii ticking. But time is ticking away as the historic downtown landmark embarks on a major facelift. A $15 million restoration and renovation campaign is being launched by Bishop Larry Silva. He hopes the work will recapture some of the aesthetic beauty of the church that Hawaii's two saints, Father Damien and Mother Marianne, saw when they prayed here nearly a century and a half ago. Father Damien came not as a priest, but as a seminarian. And two months after he arrived, uh, that is on May 21st, 1864, he was ordained a priest here at the Cathedral of Our Lady of Peace. The following day, he celebrated his first mass here. Mother Mary Ann Cope came, and when she arrived in Hawaii, this was the first place that she came for a mass of thanksgiving. Uh, people were very grateful that she and her sisters had consented to come and serve the people here who had uh, leprosy, Hansen's disease. For five years, Mother Marianne worked on Oahu. She arrived in Kalaupapa just six months before Father Damien died. There, she took over the spiritual leadership of the settlement. After they were canonized, I wanted to have relics here uh, at the cathedral. You know, the Hawaiians very much honor the, the Ivi Kupuna, and so those relics are very special to us. So we have here relics of Father Damien and Mother Marianne, and uh, we are hoping in our renovation of the cathedral to build a special chapel to house those relics. One of the most difficult and unique problems we have is rising damp and issues with plaster on the coral block. The building was initially meant to, to sort of to breathe and it has very deep porous foundations so we get, get water up and if you look around the, the building you'll see blistering on the walls up to about head height and that's from damp from the ground coming up. The church is, as you mentioned earlier, she's an old girl and yeah, she needs some, some care. People have called this church the gathering place and it will need the people's support to continue keeping it a place of sacred worship for all who come here. It's tough. Times are really hard and we face this every day. If you want this church here for your children and your grandchildren, if you see the merit in what we're doing, open your hearts. Um, and we have gotten pledges that are massive. I got one that came in and said, she had a $20 bill. She put it in there and she said, this is all I can afford, but this is what I have. And that $20 bill 
it's just as important to me, to us, as something worth a hundred times more than that. As Hawaiians, we feel a very deep commitment to anything that's in Hawaii that should be preserved. The Catholic Church is no different in that aspect. It has more of a spiritual bounty and its connection is mana driven. Therefore, the restoration of the cathedral is also the restoration of the spirit of the Hawaiian people as well. This place has called to many people to serve. People like Lori Baliaris, who is an assistant to the priest who serves daily mass. And she has done so as a volunteer for 20 years. Sometimes when I'm by myself in the sacristy, I get this peaceful feeling, like as if I've done something good for our Lord. This is the youth's chance to make a difference, make a substantial impact on the next 150 years of the cathedral. The youth have such a big role to play because not only are they filling the roles of, you know, we're the next generation coming forward. When we were young, you know, we were here when the saints enshrined here and we were here for this renovation and we have big shoes to fill in that sense that, you know, we're making history as, you know, time goes on. What brought me here was that sense of peace, that sense of serenity that I didn't have in my life. And I did, I found it here. Of course, when we lost the Hawaiians through disease and everything like that, even through the thin times, right, that the church was always here. And I do want to make sure that that same peace that I found is going to be available for anyone that steps through that door. As we move forward to the future, we must also look back and preserve that which is sacred to our rich past. We hope you'll join us by helping us to restore and renovate this grand lady of downtown Honolulu. And in doing so, we hope you renew and reaffirm your faith as well. Our Lady of Peace Cathedral, home to our two Hawaii saints, needs your kokua to keep its spirit alive and burning brightly for the generations to come. I'm Emmy Tumimbang. Aloha.